Yes. So, this uh, video, I'm going to have hopefully a little bit more information, additional information that I forgot to include in, in the other video. So, let me just go ahead and go through this. Anybody, if they wish to contribute to, they can. Just click on the, uh, the link to join. So this is about the earth being divided in the days of Peleg. There's a little bit of discussion as to what the divided means. Incidentally, I just looked up the, the word Peleg, and it actually has two different definitions. The first definition, of course, is divided like it should be. The second definition, interesting, interestingly enough, is uh, the course of the waters. So, <laughs> so it's first the earth was divided, then it was the course of the waters, you know, between the divided earth. But anyways, we go ahead with the, uh, the case for the divided earth instead of the other, I mean, the divided earth 100 years after the flood instead of during the flood. Because that's what the discussion is about. So, the two sons were born to Eber. One was named Peleg because in his time the earth was divided. And I just explained what it means, you know, what his name means. And after, okay, in other words, let me rephrase that. In the Aramaic, it means divided in the Hebrew. No, in the Hebrew, it means divided in the Aramaic, which is later. It became as the waters flow, the course of the water. Which is kind of interesting because, you know, words do change their meaning. And uh, in this case, you know, they, they could say, oh, Peleg, the earth was divided. Peleg, the earth was divided. And eventually, it could have easily become Peleg, oh, the course of the waters. Peleg, the course of the waters. Because you're speaking of the, the you know, oftentimes the definition is confused between one thing and another throughout, you know, over, over generations. So where it originally meant the earth was divided, it came to mean... The course of the waters, but that's just uh, you know just throwing that out there. <laughs> but uh, it's just my observations. That's all. Okay, the Bible verse that the idea hinges on is the one that actually says the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. Many people take that to mean that the people were divided because. That was also near the time when the language was confused. So each family went their own way. The problem with that is that it doesn't actually say the people were divided. It says the earth was divided. And it was slightly before the confusion of the languages, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I have a confirmation on that. So the only mechanism that I can offer is that a hundred years after the flood, the sediment layers hardened, became brittle, and broke apart, probably or possibly with the help of an asteroid hitting Central America. The tectonic undercurrent then shoved India into Asia. Everything else just basically broke apart. So that seems to be what happened. The question is when, and I believe that it happened 100 years after the flood because there's sediment layers that stretch from America, the North America, to Europe. And I don't think there would be a sediment layer like that if it was divided during the, uh, during the flood. But, uh, you know, some people say, well, it depends what time there is. Well, the... The breaking apart of the fountains of the deep would have to have been at the beginning of the flood. And so, to me, that wouldn't have uh, resulted in what we see. What we see is that 
it broke apart after the flood and I'm going to present whatever evidence I have for that. See, I don't know if there's any other literature supporting this idea, although I think there should be sometime, something, even if it's not, even if there isn't, there should be. Okay, come, come to think of it, the shock of the earth being divided, if in fact the earth was divided a hundred years after the flood in the time of Peleg, then uh, we could expect there to be some uh, confusion and consolidation of families. Because what happens when you have a disaster? Where do you run to? You run to your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. You run to your family, right? You want to see if your family's okay, you take care of your family. So that's probably what happened when the earth was divided. It was a catastrophic event, obviously, and uh, people were shaken. And they, everyone ran to their own family and, and basically tried to save their own family and probably forgot about building the, uh, the uh, Tower of Babel, which they were building. But in the process, they began, each family began speaking their own language. So when God divided, when God uh, confused the languages, he probably did it by way of, of uh, dividing the earth or breaking up the earth apart. And I do have more information on that a little bit. So, it, the confusion of the language could have been the result of the dividing of the, the continents, or the breaking up of the continents, easily, you know, because it could have been the cause of the, uh, the languages being, you know, according to each family. So, that could have been what happened. Okay, so yeah, so the families each understood. Okay, that that to me makes more sense than some kind of fantastic claim of a uh, of a fountain that uh, shot up to the moon or something. But um, the additional evidence that I have, if I can remember everything, is that the we also have evidence of animals that were separated because. It turns out that the uh, the jaguar in South America and the leopard of Africa are actually the same animal. They're both compatible, entirely compatible. It's the same kind of animal, entirely. They're both. It's really the same common ancestor for both of them. But while the people didn't spread out, they they stuck together and started building the Tower of Babel, contrary to what God told them to do. The animals did spread out, and some of them reached to South America. And the jaguar is one example of that, because, of course, we have uh, the jaguar, we have the African leopard, we have leopards all over the world. But between Africa and South America, they were separated, and they had basically different environments and the same thing is true not only with the jaguar but there is also a duplicate of the honey badger in South America I don't know why they call it a different animal maybe people aren't even aware of it or something but it's called the greater grison the greater grison is almost identical to the honey badger in shape form appearance you know color everything just the same as the jaguar and leopard. Only the jaguar has like expanded spots and the jaguar has smaller spots or condensed spots. And the, Whereas the jaguar spots are more spread out. But it's really the same animal. They're entirely, entirely compatible. And there's probably more examples too. And uh, I mean we do have South American possums. And uh, I don't know if they think that they were brought there, brought to South America, but uh, there used to be uh, 
there used to be uh, a link between Australia and South America by way of Antarctica. At least there was between Antarctica and South America. And apparently there could have been, they could have been joined to uh, Australia at one time. Or maybe it was separated too, you know. Maybe they were there by the time they got separated. But at any rate, those are at least two animals that I can think of that were separated, were, that were in the locations at the time of the dividing of the continents. So if the division of the continents happened during the flood, there would, there would have been no way for the jaguar or the greater grison to get to South America or the marsupial possum. But they did, and along with many other animals too, and probably there's more examples of that than, than what we might know. And of course there's a lot of chickens too, I mean fowl, uh, wild fowl in, uh, in South America. There's all different kinds. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, it was just the definition of Peleg that changed its meaning. Its meaning changed from being divided into the course of the waters or the flow of the waters. So it could have easily changed. You know, people, sometimes they understand a word to be one thing, and then when they repeat it, somebody else understands it to mean something else. So it eventually became, it changed from being divided in, into being course of the waters, which is what occurred after being after the earth was divided but that's just that's just circumstantial evidence probably probably not hard evidence but the but the animals are pretty hard evidence so and the the sediment layers that goes from north america to europe that's the same sediment layer that's pretty hard evidence and so that's what i believe and uh because it actually does say uh, the earth was divided. It doesn't say the people was di were divided. It actually says the earth was divided. And usually, if it actually says something, you better go with what it actually says, you know. If it says, uh, you know, Jesus died for, is the propitiation for our sins, not only our sins, but for the sins of the whole world, you better go with that obvious <laughs> interpretation, you know instead of some other interpretation. You better go with what it says instead of making up something other than what it says, what it actually says. And, uh, and it makes sense, too, that, you know, the earth was divided, then the languages were confused, and that seems to be the order that it occurred. And since this is the shorter version, I don't want to take too long going on and on about it. But... The point is, is for everybody to know the truth, to know that salvation is through sanctification by the Spirit sent to you by way of the blood of Jesus, because there's no other way. Only your Maker can perfectly cover for you Himself and remake you again from the inside out by the power of His true Word, as no one else can. It's by the truth of God's Word that we are saved. His Word cleanses us and gives us new life. And uh, this is what we want for everyone. That's the whole purpose of uh, going to school, learning facts, learning history, learning science, learning geology, learning what the evidence is, is so that we can know the truth, so that we can tell the truth and live by it and become sanctified by walking in the light of the truth. And God bless everyone. Uh, all you wonderful people out there. <laughs>